Oh, hey, what's up again? <laughs> uh, we've been working on this video for like nonstop two weeks now. Most of our videos that we do with our brand integrations, we have plenty of time to turn them around. Not plenty, enough. This PUBG video in particular, we have three weeks shooting it to finishing it. We need to finish it early. We need to finish it in time to send off the company something to look at the video. Give us a thumbs up. That means being really on top of things. And the only way we're gonna get this done is to actually coordinate the entire studio to work on this project all at the same time. I'm like a task manager and this is a multi-core processor and I'm constantly figuring out which tasks should go where and like constantly thinking like if this task is going to take Clint three hours and this task is going to take Adrian one hour, then how do I balance that out? How, what, what do I have Adrian do for those next two hours? It's been challenging. Doing these kind of video game videos is what I love doing. We're, we're filmmakers that are very inspired by video games. And if, if, if we fail at this, if we, like, if we can't get this done in time, the team can't work together, not only does it mean that we're not cut out to do what we wanna do, it also means that this whole growing the studio and growing the team thing may not be working out as well as we planned. But I don't think it's going to happen. The channel's not going to get deleted. But th that's, that's the thing, it's like, we need to prove ourselves with this project. So we're proving that as a team, we can do good work and we can do it fast and we can do it good. I said that twice. I said good well. twice. Well. <laughs> Carmichael, you're correcting my grammar. <laughs> it's hard to focus on five different things. Have you ever tried? You only have two eyeballs and they usually only focus on one thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, we just don't have the same time that you would on a short film where you might have like a week or two to do an entire color grid. I have a day and a half, two looks inside the force field and outside the force field. What is color? What is color grading? To me, it's the best part of the filmmaking process. You basically have like this bland looking thing. You're looking at something for so long, looks so bland, suddenly putting on sunglasses that just saturate your image and it makes everything beautiful. Like, imagine seeing everything black and white your whole life and then suddenly just putting on glasses and everything just becomes colorful. That, that to me is what color is. It can create tone, mood, you can create a unique look. You can use color as a storytelling device. Going into Vinci, building a LUT, going back into Premiere, creating an adjustment layer, bringing in that LUT that you just created onto the adjustment layer, locking that layer, and then going into individual clips to tweak certain exposures, change the ISO, because we're still working with like the, the raw files. Is this the only way or the even the right way to do color correction? Definitely not. But is it a quick way and is it an efficient way? I would say so. Dude, it's pretty zen over here. Yeah, man, I got my lucky bamboo, got my tea, but I'm just trying to stay as chill as possible. It's pretty much my life goal. Are you zen or do you need zen? I'm not one thing. It's, it's a form of self-care. Resting, relaxing, stretching, yoga, rock climbing. I like to go home and just rest on a block and it stretches my back out. I have like therapy balls that I'll rest my neck on. I mean, that's why I have a standing desk. I like to get massages a lot. I like to go to the spa a lot. I like Wii Spa. I go to Wii Spa a lot. Wii Spa's in K-Town. It's a four-story, 24-hour spa. It's the best. They have manicures, pedicures, body scrubs, facials, like all that good stuff. They have a hot tub. They have a super hot tub. They have a cold pool. They difference got... between a hot tub and a super hot tub? One's much hotter. But why call it the soup? Can I ride this real quick? Uh, yeah, why not? Is your... So here's the battery. This thing is fast, dude. <laughs> what was that sound? This is insane. <laughs> You're not doing a good job steering this. <laughs> what, dude? You're gonna spill all over me. <laughs> dude, Trader Joe's pot pies are great. Uh. <laughs> Get up. I'm gonna do one more solo run. Dude, that was...
was so Dude, funny. Dude, I love you. Where did you get your tea from? Mine? Gotcha. <laughs> but seriously, your shirt's covered in dirt. So you're not being, you're not that stressed out right now. No, we're gonna make our we're gonna make our time. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna make it. About three hours left in the day. One day left on top of today. I have seven more shots to get to a work in progress level to out to Kevin, who's doing our sound. So he knows where to put gunshots and bullet hits and whatnot. Pass for sound. A VFX sound pass. I'm thinking about hitting all the things that would require sound. It has the gunshots, it has the muzzle flashes, right? And it has the bullet hits. Not even rotoscoping, not even like touching up anything. Some, some people go as quick as doing little squares in any corner of the frame or a square on the gun. One frame in Premiere, just to get it out to sound, you know? You don't even need to do all this. For me, it's fine. Do this anyway. We all do a lot of different stuff. It's easy for us to get the VFX halfway there and send it to Kevin. It all works. A stylist uh -huh. over a mouse. Well, besides the fact that it saves your wrist from deteriorating, um, that's the main benefit. The other benefit is um, it's, I find it faster. Gun visual effects, Hollywood still sucks at. I feel like it's because, and really the key to doing a good gun effect is to just go out there and shoot guns, be familiar with how they work, and I don't think a lot of visual effects artists do that. I'm sure some do, but the ones that do the gun effects certainly aren't. <laughs> While there's people out there who are amazing at visual effects far better than I am, I can safely say that Sam and myself are the best at gun visual effects. This is pure confidence, guys. What's the difference between confidence and arrogance? Backing it up. Backing it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the difference between confidence and arrogance? Proof. Sounds like Carmichael's confident. Sam, what's the difference between confidence and arrogance? Results! Mm. We're not, you're not talking like specifically muzzle flash. Yeah, not you're talking like the gun hits and like the round hits. And, I've been learning from these guys for that. Me and Sam gun effects, are the yeah. best at gun effects. I'd agree with that, yeah. Although, I, I really, I would caution you against saying that or posting anything of you saying that in this video. What that's going to do is going to bring extreme scrutiny to the VFX in this video, which I do personally believe are not actually at a class level. It's not because of a skill thing, but it's because of a time constraint. The actual gun effects in the PUBG video, just because I'm not saying they're bad, I look at them and I'm like, if you really wanted to go, uh, like give that extra, uh, like it's missing that. What would you do to get that? Uh. Uh, well, the cloudy blood hits are cool, but I think they're too circa 2011. The cloudy blood hit thing, that, that was beat that to death. There's so many other ways to do squibs. You do the chunky ones, you do little, pew, little pieces, stuff like that. Decals, the lasting effect of the environment. We write about like decals, like both bullet holes and blood hits, but all this stuff requires extensive 3D tracking and like masking and stuff like that. Which Sam's right, we don't have the time to do on this project. Really the true, like outside of like decals, which play to this, like the true, effect of guns working well comes from the impact they make. That impact happens here on the body, not on the gun. It happens on both ends. The gun is the tool throwing a piece of metal at Mach 2, and then the rock or the body or whatever that it's hitting is a thing that's receiving the impact. So are you watching the gun being shot or are you watching the stunt guy do the crazy backflip as he falls down from the gunfire? Well both, because you have a shot of one and then you cut to the shot of the next. Both one, you know, one eye looks that way at the gun that way, that's the guy. Well, no, it's editing. <laughs> I, am, I am playing devil's advocate a little bit. Does anyone get headshot up in this video yet? No. The you effects have to be done by the end of today, and we've got not enough time. I, I can do a million VFX shots in like a minute. Sam's not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I will do it. I'll do a VFX shot. I'll do gun, one gunshot. Is there one that is done I can do? Yeah, ask Clint. Hey, Clint. I have like 15 minutes to do a VFX shot because I have to head out a little early today. Um, <laughs> What shot should I do? I want to do like a really, uh, really like uh, shot. Like, like, whoa. Blasted by Jake with a pistol over the rock. Okay, cool, great, I'll do it. Um, so uh, I need to... If, let's see if it's a headshot though. Cause you're looking for a headshot, right? I'll make it a headshot. So supposedly he's done with the whole shot. Who is Sam? What, already? No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I, I call shenanigans. Here's the thing. Sam is really good at effects and he's faster than anyone I know. But he brings it to like 80%. Oh! I, I, don't want, I don't want to be mean. Sam's very good at effects. I wanted to clarify that. That's what I've got going into this. I've got strict glasses on. Classic RSMB issue, you know, where, you where it does the jank thing? Where you get your jank tank going. See it. I mean, just, just fucking blast him straight in the head. Okay, that's pretty good. So Not gonna lie, Sam, I came in here with like doubts being like, you only spent 15 minutes on this shot. I don't know how it's gonna look. And it's pretty solid. Thanks. It's I, pretty I really solid. appreciate that. Dude, Red Giant Red Giant, shape. they got it all. They got all the best plugins. 
I'll tell you guys a secret. I haven't done visual effects, well, specifically gun visual effects, for like over two years now. Ever since Ren joined, he's really alleviated a lot of the, the work off my plate. But it's time to come back. Time to come out of retirement for this shot right here. And I want to tell you some of the tips and tricks and secrets to making this stuff look good. You'll notice in this shot, there's bullet hits that seem to have shading on them. They're casting shadows. They feel like they're connected to the environment. And if you've ever tried doing some of these effects yourself, you probably wondered why when you start out, it doesn't look so good. Probably make your background footage, drop it in, and you grab one of your ground hit elements that maybe you get from Action VFX or Action Essentials. You drop that in. Oh, it needs transparency, so you put it on screen mode or something. And you got yourself cool bullet hit. And it looks really fake. Blech. Right? Even if it's motion tracked, it doesn't look like it's supposed to be there, does it? So I'm gonna show you the secret to gun effects and what I do to make this stuff look good. What I do to make it feel like it's part of the scene. Even if you're not doing visual effects, it's interesting to see how people create reality and bend reality with their shot. It's like watching a painter sit down and paint a photoreal painting. So at the end of the day, when it comes to making good visual effects, it's the same discipline. You're going to be inventing something with your tools and with your mind that looks real. So you need to know about real life and how to represent it and make it look real. If you can draw a good picture, if you can paint a nice picture, you can definitely do visual effects. First things first, First, I'll talk about these bullet hits here coming off this rock. So there's a lot of things you want to think about when making a bullet hit look good. You need a good element that you're going to drop in. Some of the best ones are either from Action Essentials, but they're really kind of old by now and used by everybody, or Action VFX, which is a VFX stock footage company based in the UK, and they're really putting on some really solid stuff. Once you drop the stuff in, it's going to need work to make it look good. Here's some of the things to think about. Let's say you just have your footage, your background footage here, and you drop in an element. In this case, I'm going to grab the element, wall side hits three. Boom, it's in. Now, I did some motion tracking here. You can track points in After Effects, or you can track little areas in Mocha. It's not very hard to track a point in a scene. So if you're going to have a bullet hit or an impact in your scene, you need to track the point where it's going to hit so it sticks there if your camera's moving. Basic stuff, but one of the first steps to making things look like they're part of the environment. Secondly, you have your element in there. It doesn't look real. It's in there right now. It's just like a, it looks like a piece of footage pasted on top. We gotta start making it look real. In drawing, they talk about making a drawing on a piece of paper and connecting it to the page. And you connect something to the page with a shadow. So anytime you add elements, if you really want to feel like it's connected to the environment, you need to add a shadow. There we go. Suddenly, it feels like this dust hit is actually there on top of the rock. It looks pretty solid, but you know what? It's still kind of flat. Like, look at the dirt all around us here. There's all these different tonalities. There's lighting coming from a certain direction. And this dust hit, just, it's just kind of one color. Even though it has some depth to it now, there's a shadow there. <clears throat> it's just not reading. I'm gonna add another element, sit from the same pack. So I'm gonna add wall side hit 11. Wow. Here's the thing. So this element I added behind the other one, it's a slightly different color. It didn't come that way. I made it that way. You have, you have basic ways to adjust your color. I just used hue and saturation. And I also added some levels to thicken the effect because I didn't do levels on the color channels. I did levels on the alpha channels. You can treat your alpha channel like a black and white image and increase the contrast, decrease the contrast, brighten it, darken it, and it'll affect your transparency accordingly. Now these two elements layered together feel a little bit more robust. It feels a little bit less like I just pasted a piece of footage on my shot and like I'm actually getting an element crafted for the shot. But you know what? It's still super flat. So this is my, it's my number one secret. This is the thing that I teach everybody when they come into corridor and they start doing gun effects. I duplicate it again and I draw a mask around half of it from, that, from the direction the light is coming from. And then if I want to, I can also brighten it a little bit. This little trick of just duplicating it and masking it gives it volume and gives it shape. It actually starts making it look like it's being shaded from the light. And this is where a little bit of that drawing and painting like know-how comes into play. So you think about like drawing a sphere on a piece of paper and you give it a light direction. Well, I'm gonna put the shadow over here and I'm gonna shade the sphere here. It's the same thing for these elements. You need to think about them existing in this world. This element be lit by the sun. Yeah, probably, it's out there under the sun. <laughs> Which direction would it be lit from? What would the colors be like? How bright would it be? I'm not done yet. That little shading a bit looks great until the smoke starts thinning out. Because once, once the dust gets thinner, it shouldn't really be picking up a thick volumetric kind of look. So I just simply keyframed transparency. It starts at 100, goes down to about 20% and sits there for the rest of the shot. Nice. This dark element behind it, that kind of needed a shadow too, so I added one of those as well. And to add a shadow, it's pretty simple. All I did to add a shadow was take my element, duplicate it, blur it, oh, and I put it on multiply. Now shadows in real life can be different colors depending on the color of your ambient light. In this case, I did just a slight shift back towards purplish oranges because blue sky tends to make your shadows blue. You can always look at the shadows in your scene, the real shadows, for a reference. All that together pretty much makes it look like this hit is part of the shot. There's one last thing I did. The last little bit of magic here is a little bit of a bullet hit. Boink, right there. I added some camera shake, actually. It's a second pass for when the hit happens, which helps make it feel like it's part of the scene. It also hides 
all my small mistakes. <laughs> a good VFX artist is always looking to the elements in their scene that are real for reference to make sure your colors match. These elements will give you really good looking bullet impacts if you can hit all those check marks and hit all those boxes. Turn everything back on here. 